conceptual I artist. I mean, this or... whole thing, this lady comes out with a box <laughs> on her head. I mean, how did someone come to that? You know, and um, that's, that's where I think the gong show was, was really great. Now, they've tried the gong show again several times, one now, one very recently, and, and it doesn't work. And why do you think that is? Well, I don't think that, that, I don't know, I have no idea. I mean, it's an interesting question. I mean, I think it so much was a product of its times, the 60s. That's exactly right. But why was it a product of That its was time? in the 80s. That was in the 70s, 75 yeah. to, to that 80. That they did the show again. Oh, yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah. And um, um, I don't know whether it was... It w w was our ability to pick out really outstanding acts, but that that couldn't be it because we had a dearth of uh, not having being able to get a, a bunch of good acts. In fact, at one time everybody came in singing uh, feelings, mm. and that's all I heard all day long was feelings. So I put on a show with all the acts singing feelings, uh, which I think was one of our better shows. But. Um, was I don't it know. the sense of irony, the sense of irreverence? The uh, oh, it was irreverent. But and, and, yeah, and, I wonder and, why it can't be done now. It's an interesting question. Well, they don't have me. They don't have you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, in today's world of fast foods, express checkout lines, and quick service, this next act is rapidly getting on my nerves. Here it comes. Are you ready? Oh, goody. Ladies and gentlemen, here it comes, Prunella. Well, your persona on that show was very important. Could you tell us about to what extent did you think about how you were appearing, and to what extent was that just who you were right then and there? Well, let me see. I started out doing that show in a tuxedo, and uh, I slowly evolved into something that wasn't anything like a tuxedo. I had a uh, I was wearing army jackets, and I had a holster with a chicken in it, and it just seemed there was an Ernie Kovacian uh, uh, edge to the show. Uh, the, the set was, was wonderful, and, and uh, I had a coat tree with all these strange hats work, uh, sitting on it. And the whole, the whole feeling of the show was, was just what I wanted. But... Uh, it, it, it affected me. I mean, I slowly lost my mind on that show. I mean, I really lost it. You're speaking literally it. here? Well, lost, and no, I, I lost it. I, and why the thing I, I told my, my um, I told my, all of my hosts on all the game shows we did, this is a five day, it's a five a week show. Uh, don't get bored with it. Uh, just stay to the format and everything will be fine. The worst thing you can do is become bored and start making mistakes and the thing will just go in the, in, down the drain. I broke all those rules. I just kept thinking that this was the boringest show that ever went and I just ratcheted up my performance and the, the performance of, of, with, of, of our celebrities and so forth till we ratcheted ourselves right off the air. And, uh, and I think that was a fault of my own. But don't you think it was that ratcheting up that made the show such a, an iconic show? Well, I, I mean, had you not done that, we wouldn't be remembering that show the way we, we do. Uh, that, you that, I guess that's was, true. You know, because you never stayed on the same level with never, the show. Never, never. Um, I, I, you know, it was, it was. So did you, I, when did, did you get bored with it or did you just go crazy? I, I went, I, it was a combination uh -huh. of the two. I, and I, um, I left that show thinking that uh, the, the nation, uh, my nation of viewers, the viewers who watched the gong show hated me. And that's, you know, the critics hated me. I'm, and I, I always used to tell, tell my hosts again, don't listen to these TV <laughs> critics. They're like dinosaurs. They're going to disappear. Yeah. Nobody cares about uh, what they have to say about a show you get for nothing, so it, it doesn't mean anything. And then I, you broke I've all succumbed, your own rules. succumbed to to the critics, uh, you know. Well, I wonder, you know, one of the things they say is if you're going to work in television, you can't really be a sensitive soul. But it sounds to <laughs> me as though true. you you That's are true. a sensitive soul. Yet you had a great deal of success. But would you say that ultimately that was what drove you out of television? 
was well, that you were it, too uh, sensitive for it? I, 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 I'm not I, sure exactly I don't know, what that means. But I think I think that you're that there was a, a, a there was a, an element of that in in, in my in my failure. Uh, I, I think that if I stayed in the business and didn't go in front of a camera, I probably would have had 62,000 game shows on and I would have still been, uh, my company would have still been uh, working. But uh, going on the air and, and doing what I did just blew television away. And why away. is it that you did decide to be the host? I mean, you had had success as the producer and behind the scenes, was it some level of vanity or performance desire that caused you to want to host it, or were you told to host it, or what, what was behind well, it that? Well, it was uh, M M uh, Madeline David, who was the vice president of NBC, uh, said to me, if you don't host this show, I'm not going to do it. Uh, she based that on a, a run-through that I did with a, with a host, and I was showing him the way to do the gong show and she was present and she said if you don't do it I don't want to do it and it was greed in that respect uh, so I, I thought well I'll go ahead and do it and uh, that's yeah, the way the that, that happened. Well um, I wonder if I mean you say you don't watch the recent game shows you did, well you don't watch no, American don't. Idol you're no. not interested um, I wonder though if you can analyze what, what you think it is about the American public that likes the game show. I, mean, I, I don't know really what, why the public uh, is so, uh, e eats these shows up the way they do, which they apparently do, but uh, it's just, um, I, I don't know, I have no idea. Competitiveness, greed, uh, you know, the idea, I mean, again, it's not a washer dryer anymore. But, no, it isn't. But, you know, we, we had, I don't know whether the times have changed. I had a show on called Three's a Crowd. And Three's a Crowd was a show that I had the husband, all the husbands came out first, and they were asked a question. And then they were joined by their secretaries on their left. And the secretaries either answered the question, like a question might be, have you ever taken your secretary to Palm Springs? Uh, uh, Calif uh, California, and the sec and the uh, and the husband says absolutely not, mm -hmm. and the secretary said, "What about the two times that you took me down there?" Uh -huh. uh, and and uh, uh, he went, "Oh, geez." And then the wife would come out, and it was amazing to see that that threesome. Uh, and the wife would come out and say, "He better had said none," and and he said, "None." Uh -huh. And he holds up his card as if he just said the most wonderful thing. And uh, the secretary said, wait a second, two times I, he took me. And the fireworks began. Now, that show was canceled mm -hmm. after 13 weeks. I, I thought it was one of the best shows I ever did. I thought that was the, 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 the triangle of all time. Uh, and that, that show was canceled because people rose up housewives rose up and said, no, that's not... It's going too far. That's going too far. But they had another show like that recently, and it was canceled, where the, who knows the, uh, spa, the spouse better, the secretary, I don't know if they just used well, the the secretary or the wife. I'm not sure about the name of this show, but that's a variation on this, yeah, but it well, that, didn't that's true. work. But they had... It hits like, too close to the bone, I guess. We couldn't do that then. I mean, we couldn't just not do it. And like, right, the, uh, we were asked a hundred times, I, I was shown a hundred times a, a lie detector show uh, where you would ask questions to somebody and if they answered incorrectly, you know, so forth, by the lie detector. Mm -hmm. The questions we, we, we could have asked in those days were so different from the questions they ask today. Today they're asking questions like, did you ever sleep with another woman? Yeah. We couldn't do that in a million, billion years. I mean, yeah. we couldn't say God. We couldn't say toilet seat. We couldn't say make love. We had to say things like make whoopee, you know, on the, so on the new So what's your take on this? Are you nostalgic for that? that simpler, more innocent time? Or do you wish you could have been working in television when no. you had no hope? Oh, I, I don't know. I don't really care. You know, television, t 
to me is a thing of the past. I, uh, I, I always wanted to write, and I, and I couldn't wait to get out of television so that I could, so that I could write. Was it then the gong show that drove you out of television? Yes. Uh, at one point, uh, I took up uh, a, uh, uh, a club, and I broke, I was walking around the set breaking it apart. Now that is not the, uh, the nature of a sane person. So apparently somewhere along the line, <laughs> I, uh, I, I fell apart at the seams. Um, and I, I, I don't know why or so forth and so on, but. But you left. But now, I left. Now you say you're out of television, but I hear that the newlywed game and the dating game are being resurrected yet again. Yes. Are you involved at all with no. that? No, no involved. No, none at all. None but in the Gong Show, none in the other. Some residuals. No, no. no. I, when I sold my company, I sold it to Sony, and uh, that was it. I just washed my hands of, of everything and And, and you have and no left. regrets. Uh, I enjoyed, my, my television years were the most enjoyable, were, were so enjoyable, it's, it's pathetic. But... Uh, it was time for me to, to leave. I, I seem to work in 20 year brackets. I do, I went to school for 20 years, I went in television for 20 years, and I've been writing for 20 years, and I think that's it. That's it? That's There's not it. another 20 year? Well, there, there might be another 20 years. I, I'm missing a 20 years, I think the first 20 years yeah. before I got educated, but I don't know, that's all, that's it. I, I, and you're not a nostalgic person, I take it. You don't no, look back. No, no. I, but I think very happily about those days. They were fun. They really were. Well, I want to thank you very much, Chuck Barris, for giving us this little uh, interlude about your time in television. And we'll be back uh, for the second part of the show where you can talk about your writing career, which I'm very interested in hearing more thank about. Thank you, Paul. And thank you for joining us today at the Drexel Interview.